In this project, we will learn the process on how to build an AMG steering wheel that can be used on a racing simulator. The design of the steering wheel started by searching for a few reference images of the Mercedes AMG steering wheel. From these images, a 3D model of the steering wheel is created. When making the 3D model, we also need to consider the materials that will be used and how the parts will be assembled. For the main body, carbon fibre or aluminium plate can be used. Aluminium is preferred, as it is easier to work with using hand tools. From the 3D model, a 2D template is printed out onto paper, and then this is placed onto the aluminium plate with an adhesive. Then the template is used as a cutting guide. We can start cutting the inner sections of the handles on the metal plate first. A centre punch is used to mark the inside drilling points. A drill bit bigger than the cutting blade is selected, and this will make a hole larger than the blade, allowing the inner sections to be cut out. Begin cutting around the inner sections of the template, following the lines, allowing a fraction of a millimetre extra that will be finished later. With both the inner sections of the handles cut out, we can start cutting around the outer edges of the template, creating the main shape of the wheel. Next we can drill out the mounting points and the button holes. Flat and round files are used along all of the edges to remove any sharp spots or cutting marks. To give a final finish, the edges are sanded smooth with sandpaper. The metal plate is now ready to be covered with a carbon vinyl or painted black. The carbon vinyl is applied to the metal plate using a felt edged vinyl squeegee. The vinyl is worked from the centre out to the edges which helps remove any air bubbles. This particular carbon vinyl also has a removable protective top clear layer that protects the top surface during installation. The carbon vinyl can be wrapped around the edges, but as this wheel was already painted black, it was carefully trimmed following the edge. The next step is to design and make some button decals. These are printed onto an adhesive paper, then cut out with a vinyl cutter. The stickers are carefully placed onto the wheel at the button locations. Using a small pair of tweezers can help position the stickers. For the steering wheel, we will need a total of 10 momentary push buttons. There is one red button that will be used with a 3D printed button guard and 9 remaining black buttons. The red button is installed into the button guard and then it is placed onto the wheel. At the back of the button, a nut is installed and tightened into place. All the other buttons can be installed into the steering wheel and tightened with a spanner. For the electronics, a USB joystick encoder is used. These kits come with all the wiring included. The wires will be soldered to the buttons so we can trim off the spade terminals and strip back the wires. The top two buttons above the handles will be on the outside of the enclosure so a piece of heat shrink is cut to length and this will cover the exposed wiring and keep it neat. Before soldering the wires, the cut heat shrink is placed over the two sets of wires. Next, the wires are attached and soldered to the button terminals. Once soldered, the heat shrink can be moved closer to the button. Heat is then applied using a small butane torch to shrink the tubing. To protect and cover the back of the switch, a 3D printed cover is made and installed. The same process of soldering and using heat shrink can be completed on the other side. With the top two buttons complete, we can begin working on soldering the remaining eight buttons. These ones don't require heat shrink or covers as they will be inside the main enclosure. 
The paddle shifter components are 3D printed, then wires from the joystick encoder kit are soldered to the common and normally open terminals on the switches. Then the paddles are installed to the magnetic shifters. The enclosure is printed next. This will cover the exposed electronics at the back of the wheel, holding the wiring, the joystick encoder and the magnetic paddle shifters. From the back of the enclosure, the wiring for the shifters are passed through the small hole and then the magnetic paddle shifters are positioned into place. From the inside, the paddle shifters are bolted to the enclosure. The same process is repeated for the second paddle shifter, securing it in place with bolts. USB joystick encoders are plug and play devices which are perfect for steering wheels or button boxes that use a small amount of buttons. The joystick board is installed and secured to the enclosure with four screws in each corner. The next part to be printed is the hub spacer. Before installing this part to the wheel, the USB cable from the joystick encoder kit is passed through the centre and secured with a cable tie. The cable tie is then trimmed off with a pair of cutters. The USB connection is passed through a hole on the back and into the inside of the enclosure. Then the cable is plugged into the correct socket on the joystick board. The two cables from the shifters are also plugged in, then all the remaining wires from the buttons are plugged into the joystick board. With all the wires connected inside, the front plate and the enclosure can be aligned together. Check the two top button wires with the heat shrink are aligned to the slots on the enclosure before completely closing. From the front, bolts are placed through the wheel plate and into the enclosure and then through the hub spacer. Nuts can be temporarily added to the bolts before installing a quick release or wheel base adapter. The handles for the steering wheel are the next items to be 3D printed. There are two for the front and two for the back. The handles can be installed straight from a 3D printer or they can be covered with suede. If covered with suede, the front handles have nuts pre-installed and a small drop of super glue is used to keep them in place. Then glue is applied to the handles and the suede is carefully shaped and trimmed around the handle. Once the handles are covered, a small hole is made on the back handles for the bolts to pass through. The front and back handles are installed to the steering wheel and the three bolts from the back are tightened. With the handles installed, we have a nice clean edge that almost disappears into the suede. The final part to finish and complete the look of the steering wheel is to install a Mercedes badge onto the front. To check the function, the steering wheel is connected to a PC and the buttons and paddle shifters are tested in the control panel's controller properties. For compatibility, the AMG steering wheel can be connected to a Logitech, Thrustmaster or Fnatic wheelbase. On Logitech wheelbases, the steering wheel is quickly connected using a quick release adapter. On Thrustmaster, the steering wheel is connected with a quick release screw type adapter. And on Fnatic, the steering wheel can be connected using a podium or universal hub.
This project is an easy way to achieve amazing results with a few basic tools and a great way to build your own high quality custom steering wheel which can be enjoyed on your favourite racing sim.